As you might know, it's not possible to track iframe interactions using GTM click triggers. So in this video, I will show you an alternative way of how you can track people who have interacted anywhere inside of your iframe to estimate how often this element is used. We will use Google Analytics events in my examples, but setup can be easily adjusted for any other vendors. Since we can't use default triggers to reliably detect interactions with an iframe, we will use JavaScript template for that. You can copy the snippet from my blog post and the link is in the description of this video. Then open your Google Tag Manager and there we will create a new tag. So go under Tags and create new one. Here you will need to select Tag Type Custom HTML and paste your code here. Don't save it yet, as we will need to adjust a few things for this script to work for your specific scenario. So let's quickly take a look at the code. First of all, at the top we have a function that focuses on our current window. Since we determine if an iframe is selected by using a focus event, this resets focus to the main window in case it's modified at some point before our script loads. Next, we have a variable where we define CSS selector that we want to use for our iframe. It's important to adjust this value in case you have multiple iframes on the page, otherwise your data will include interactions with all of those iframes. So in this case, I have specified iframe as a CSS selector and it will fetch all elements that have an iframe tag. If you're not sure how to get a CSS selector for your iframe, you can check my article on GTM DOM elements to get some sense on how to do this. Or alternatively, you can explore CSS selectors on your own in more detail. I have added links in the video description. So regarding CSS selectors, let's take a look at an example. On my website, I have a map in an iframe and you might have some other snippets on your website. And to get the CSS selectors, first we need to inspect an element. And you can do that by right-clicking on your element and inspect. I'm using Chrome, but this should be similar in other browsers as well. So from the developer window, you need to find your iframe. So since we have selected element that is inside iframe, we need to go up the DOM tree and find an iframe. So I have here iframe. And what we are interested in here is additional parameters that can distinguish this specific iframe. So in my case, I have both ID and the class name, and I can use those in my CSS selectors. So for example, if you would have an ID and I have ID example iframe, you would copy that and go back to Tag Manager, edit iframe selector variable, and here after iframe add hash and your ID value, which in my case was example iframe. And we are adding hash because this is part of CSS selector syntax. So if you would have a class name, you would copy your class name and use a dot here for your iframe. So in my case, I had the same class name as an ID. So if I go back, you see I have class equals example iframe. And that's why I can use also this selector to target this iframe. Also note that any changes that you do here should still be included in double quotes, otherwise this snippet will not work. Again, please check additional links in the description if you want to explore how CSS selectors work in more detail. In case you have only one iframe on the page and you are sure that there will not be any additional iframes, then you should be good to go with the default CSS selectors as well, which was just iframe. All right, the next variable that we have here is Google Analytics event name. And this is the value that will be sent to GA4 and will be displayed in your report. You can adjust this name to whatever you see fit for your event naming convention. It's also fine to leave it the same as I have in my template. Then we have a bunch of code that you should not edit unless you feel confident with JavaScript. First, we are creating an event listener when our main window is blurred. For example, it can be blurred when we focus on iframe or switch to another tab. And then we check if currently focused element is in our iframe. 
So we are using CSS selector that we have provided above. So when you click somewhere inside an iframe, your current window is technically blurred in the browser and the active element will be your iframe element. So if the active element is our iframe, we are sending a data layer push with provided event name. As you might have guessed, we will use the data layer event GA event as a trigger to send data back to Google Analytics. If you feel confident, you can also modify GA event to whatever value that fits best for your setup or add data layer variables to collect additional information. Now, we only need to add a trigger for this tag and you can run this script either on all pages or you can target only page with an iframe. If you have your iframe only on one page or just a couple of pages, I would recommend limiting this code only to those side sections to reduce the number of scripts loaded elsewhere. So in my case, I had this URL for my page. So I will copy that and I will quickly add a trigger that fires only on that page. So you can click on the plus sign and page view some pages, page path contains your page. And now we can name our tag and save it. Now, after we have saved the JavaScript template, let's create a custom event trigger that will notify GA tag about the iframe click. Go to the trigger section and create a new one. From trigger type, select custom event. And the event name will be the same as you have in JavaScript template. In my case, it was GA event. In case you're using a different value, then you need to change it here. Now let's name the trigger and save it. Finally, let's send an event to Google Analytics. Let's go back to tag section and create a new tag. From tag type, select Google Analytics GA4 event. Now pick your measurement ID variable if you have created that one in Google Tag Manager. Or you can just use Google Analytics data stream measurement ID here. So it would be like G12345, etc. I have a variable for that, so I will use that. For event name, we will use a dynamic value that we are passing from our custom script. To do that, we will fetch data layer contents. So let's click on the plus sign to add a new variable and click here as well. Variable type will be data layer variable and data layer variable name will be event underscore name because this is the value that we have used in our data layer push here. Now let's name and save our variable and you will see it is automatically applied as our event name. Now, all we need to do is to apply the new trigger that we have just created called GA event. Click on triggers and select GA event. And that's it for the setup. So now you can save your tag. Now you are ready to test your iframe interactions. And to do that, you can open a preview mode then enter URL where you have your iframe and click connect. Now, if I interact with this iframe and open tag assistant, I will see GA event. And this is what you should see for your iframe interactions as well. So if you click on that, we will see that GA4 event is fired. You can also refresh the page to check if events is not triggered when you only load the page and do not interact with the iframe. So let's go back to tag assistant and switch to the new page and you can see no event is fired. Then we go back to iframe, interact with it. And when you go back, you will see our new event is triggered together with the GA4. Using this method, we can track only the fact that a visitor interacted anywhere within an iframe, we can't see what elements were clicked. To see what elements exactly were clicked, we would need to have our Google Tag Manager or other custom code added inside third-party service provider iframe, which in most cases isn't possible. 
Still, having the possibility to see how many visitors interact with an iframe is better than nothing. So, if you found this approach useful, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more similar tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.